Now, I don't cuss, but Tiffany Montgomery, you are a... Sir Walter Jones is my friend. He is a godly man, but he's up in age. He is one of our senior citizens in the ministry. Older man, godly man, but an older man. And so when he hears certain things from a Christian, it could affect his health. And he heard, he heard this woman, Tiffany Montgomery, who claims to be a prophet. She is not. She claims to be godly. She is anything but use words that really almost killed this man. I could, no one could believe the words that were coming out of this that almost killed Sir Walter Jones. Let me just play the clip and let you guys see how it's affecting my brother, how he almost died because he's an older man, how this woman uses words without any regard for anyone else. This is the date that I got saved. August, 2015. I gave my life to Christ. Now, in case you didn't know, Tiffany Montgomery is the woman on the left of your screen. Sir Walter Jones is the man on the right of your screen. She's talking about her testimony. This is an ungodly testimony, if you if you ever heard one. Think about what she's saying, and then think about and listen to the words that she's going to use to talk about being saved by Christ. And before this month came to an end, um, I wanted to give God all the glory, honor, and the praise for saving my life from a death sentence. And I'm gonna share why in a second. Now, um, I think that any of you that have young children, oh, let me say this. I love that somebody just said this. Let me say this. Somebody said, Tiffany, you shouldn't be cussing in the pulpit. And I Now, what she's getting at, there are a lot of us that have brought up this issue about her using harsh words, using profane profanity, using words that she just ought not to use. This is what she's addressing now. I remember when I first saw somebody say that, I was like, Lord, I know I, I am not a cussing woman because I left that at the cross. I do not cuss. I don't say none of the cuss words. And I was like, why do these people keep saying I'm cussing? And then I realized that people considered when I say you pissed me off, they consider pissed off a cuss word. I get it. And then I realized um, people considered the word dick a curse word. And now. OK, yeah, that's bad. That's bad. And it start, you, you see how it startled Sir Walter Jones. You almost gave him a heart attack right there. Now, let me say this. You might not like the words piss off or dick. Right. You, you might not care for that word. And you may feel like I could use a better word yes, to could. give my examples. You could. But the truth is, men and women of God. Mm -hmm. Those aren't bad words. Those aren't bad words. The Bible says that we shouldn't call evil good and good evil. You know, th those are bad words. Some of the words you use in of themselves aren't necessarily bad words, but it's how you use the words. Don't you get that, you ungodly woman? It's just not a bad word. You might not like the word, but it's not a bad word. It's not a curse word. I would also say... That in the context that I use the word dictum is because most of us, not all of us, some of y'all had good, good godly common sense, but not all of us. Some of us were dictum. That's why right now you're trying to get back 5, 10, 15, and 20 years of your life because you were in a destiny destroying relationship because you were dictum. Now, could I use the word penis? Yes. But to be very honest with you, we weren't penis dumb. Penis means that you had good, godly common sense. You had good, godly character. You had good, godly self-control. It means that you had a responsible man that loved you, cared for you, cherished you. He had the fear of the Lord. Penis means that you were married. You, He's not even going to play you and have sex with you outside of marriage. Penis means that you, you nobody can be penis dumb. Now, she's she's killing Walter. She, she, she's raising his temperature up. And what she's saying is absolutely stupid. Think about it. If I were to say that, Tiffany, you blankety, 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 blank. Now, some of you are thinking, Corey, are you cussing? You're blurring things? You're bleeping things out? No, I'm just using the bleep just for effect. Uh, what I'm saying is, underneath me, I'm saying you ungodly woman. I'm saying blankety, blankety, blank. But me bleeping it out, 
may cause someone to <gasps> clutch the pearls. She's literally saying it and has no regard. And plus, she's almost killing our older brother, Sir Walter Jones. You know what I mean? Like, nobody can, nobody's penis dumb. You can only be dick dumb. Dick dumb means you're stupid. You gave your body over to somebody you knew was cheating on you, knew didn't want you, um, knew was playing in your face. Dick dumb mean that you will fight everybody except for the man that's cheating on you. You know, dick, dick, you know what I'm talking about. So I, I get it, you guys. I understand. You do not like me using this word, but it's not going to stop me from using the word. So you should probably just move on. And most of the men that don't like me using the word um, are old, dumb, and full of cum. They are, they are taking the dick. And they're in your pulpits right now. They're preaching to you, and they're leaving off of the pulpit um, having sex with other men. And they are filled with the creamy substance, and now they want to come on live and talk about me. She is killing him. She, she, the man, the man's heart rate is going up. He's got to take his heart rate to, cause there's some, there's some extra beats in his heart and she doesn't care. She doesn't care. What Tiffany Montgomery is, is a So I'll say it again. It's not a curse word. God has not convicted me about using the word. <sighs> Uh, that's because your God doesn't care. Now, our God does. As a matter of fact, Paul tells us, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification. The words you're using really aren't. Uh, it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Don't know if that necessarily that doesn't apply to her, but let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as Christ has also forgiven you. Look what he says. Be imitators of Christ or be imitators of God. What she's saying, what she's doing is in no way, shape, form, or fashion, imitating the Lord as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you. Look what he says. But immorality immorality or the word pornea, the words that you're using are pornographic words or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you. Uh, he says, and there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks of God. You are violating this. And the problem is you're doing it intentionally. You don't care. So I will stop. But until then, I will continue to use the word in the context in which I use it in because there have been many people that have been delivered from being dictum because of this ministry. And I will continue to deliver the masses from dangerous dick. I'm just going to do it. So you'll just have to um, excuse me. And I just, uh, God is not mad at me about it. And poor Walter, he, he his blood pressure shot up. His heart's not working right. You're going to kill this man all because you. And um, as you continue to make your YouTubes about me and your TikToks about me, just make sure you include the men on the pulpits that are um, being rammed up the buttocks by Dick. With that being said, I would like to tell all of you my salvation story and how I got saved. You can't. You you can't. You literally ruin your salvation story before you got to it. That is, if indeed you got saved by that. No one cares about what you said. No one can even think about what you said because of what you said previously. Now, you don't care that it affects someone else, but that's not what a Christian should do. The Bible says, therefore, if food causes my brother to stumble, I will never eat meat again. I mean, I won't do it in front of them. You don't have to use those words. Small people use small words. Uh, people in the gutter use gutter words. Profane people use profanity. That's just, it just is what it is. You use words to give a, uh, a sharper sense of, uh, of, of acceptance of what you're saying. You want folks to accept what you're saying because you're not sure of what you're saying. And in order for them to buy it, you want to use 
profanity. You are to have your words, as the Bible says, seasoned with salt, but not you, not you. You don't care. But let me just help you out, sweetheart. The Bible says, speaking about these two brothers, Nadab and Abihu, they approached the Lord with this strange fire in a profane manner. Not totally sure, but the way they approached him was in an ungodly fashion with an ungodly heart at an, probably an ungodly time. The Bible tells us that the Lord consumed them with fire. And notice what Moses tells their father, Aaron. He says, it is said that by those who come near me, I will be treated or regarded as holy before all people. I will be honored. She's not doing so at all. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, that whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all to the glory of God. Even if you're opening your mouth to speak, if you say you're speaking about God or whatever, you don't, you do it in a godly fashion. You do everything to bring God glory, not dishonor or shame. She knows full well, unless she's just absolutely stupid, she knows full well that it's going to bother some people, but she doesn't care. Why? Because she's a profane woman. I'm sorry. I should have bleeped that out just for extra effect. What I'm saying is she's an ignorant, profane woman who is prideful. But what I but what I should have did was said the exact same thing and bleep it out for you know for dramatic effect since that's what she's going for. So what she is is a Amen.